Well, hello. Uh, today I'm going to be a do a short little video on this uh, mobile app. Uh, as uh, everyone knows, if you've been reading the uh, patch notes for 1.0, they changed the mobile lab. That's uh, interesting. Anyways, it's a rather extensive note. So now the mobile lab provides a passive uh, science research. Okay. And a lot of people are having troubles getting it going. And they get it into orbit, they start research, and they find it's not getting any research. Now this lab is already operational. Um, and as you see, I've got data here, i got science, I've I got actual numbers here. Now, when, to set it up, what you got to do, get it into orbit, you got to get two scientists in there. Alright, make sure they're scientists. Um, because they got a science bonus, I guess. I don't know, this is just what I've found that works. Alright, get two scientists in it, get it into orbit. Then, you got to actually do some experiments. You don't necessarily have to have them on the station. Um, it, it's good at starters. When you first get it in the lab, up, I got this one operational by just doing a crew report. And then transferring over, uh, and I'll show you here. So let's do some science. Uh, for the purpose of getting the lab operational, it doesn't matter if you actually get science from the science experiments. Okay. Now, I'm not sure if it's going to work with these four because I've already done them with it, but I got seven others here that I got uh, while in orbit, just EVA reports. So what you gotta do is this is what I do. You go EVA. I'll grab these experiments, take data, and as you see, it's just a bunch of EVA reports from different biomes. Okay, Bob. Let's go over to the science bay. Oh, and if anyone from Squad is watching these uh, little capsule pods, thank you. <laughs> okay. I really like the big one because I can do this. No bouncing around trying to collect my science. Just get close and I got a little section of ladder there to grab. There we go. Alright, so we're going to take the data. Take the data. Now, alternatively, you could do collect data, a run out to Mon or Minmiz or Duna or anywhere, and on your way home. Now you're not going to lose any science. On your way home, you stop off at your local station with all your data you've collected. Alright, and we're going to let go. And we're going to head up to the lab. Now there's already two scientists there, and what you want to do is, if you've got one lab like this with two scientists, you're going to want to rotate your scientists and take them back to Kerbal every once in a while to level them up. That's why I got that little pod back there, so I can uh, return them. Uh, because the higher the level, the more science. At least that's what I've been experimenting with. So, I'm going to go over to the lab with all my science. I'm not going to lose my science, okay? I'm not depositing it permanently, but I'm going to store them here. All right. And let's not leave Bob out in space. Let's just uh, toss him in here. Okay, so I've got my science in the lab. I'm going to board there. i got my scientists in the lab. So now I go and I review my data. Now notice that I have 114 data. Review data. Now each science experiment as an, an amount of science you get if you transmit, an amount of science you get if you recover it. But then it's also got a data size. Now this is, before this has only mattered when you were transmitting data, how long it's going to take. Now this one I've already done, obviously. So they've already got the data. It's amongst this 114. So I'm going to keep that. And I'll just keep it, uh, just skip it. Just about Kerbin's water. Okay, here's one that I don't have amongst this 114. It'd be nice if it was listed what was here, but um, 
One thing you could do is put a lab of uh, an orbit of each planet and only put that planet's science in that lab. It would be a good way to keep track of it. Or to have different labs and label them, you know, your MUN lab, your MINMUS lab. Because once it's maxed out at 500, you can't get any more. Okay? So this has 8 bits and it gives me 10 data. So I'm going to click that and it's going to start. Oop. Now let's get rid of these. And it's going to start adding that to the 114. And once it gets up there, and ding, now we have 128. And our rate is going to go up. So we're going to keep that. Uh, if, if, it, if, it, if I hadn't done it before, see how much it adds. It still adds even if you are not getting any science from it. Um, obviously, you know, better experiments, you know, soil samples and whatnot. It's going to put a lot more data into your lab. Um, so we just go through, and we're going to keep that one. And we're going to add it to that research. We're going to add that research. We're going to add that one. We're going to keep that one. Keep that one. Yeah, going to keep that. We're going to keep that. And as it goes through, it's going to add it. So you're not using the lab anymore to increase your science so that you can transmit it. Okay? What you're doing is you're copying the data to the lab so that they have research data to do experiments with. So we're going to keep this, we're going to keep this. And, and as your data account goes up, your science rate's going to go up. And then that science rate per day gets accumulated. You know, you gain science every day. And once you get to 500, you click the transmit button. It only removes the science one. So you put it in a space station, say in Kerbin orbit or Mun orbit or wherever. All right, and then you have your little shuttle here like I got. It's got your science experiments, and it's got room for two crew members. So you got a scientist, so you can reset your experiments, and you got a pilot, so you can actually fly it decently. You get to your desk, you get out there, you do your science, you come back to your station, you transfer your science over to the lab, you do that, uh, the compile, uh, the the researching. So all of the research is over and now. The data is not going to disappear when I take them. Okay. So I'm going to EVA with Bob here, now that we've done all of our data transferring. And in theory, you could trans uh, broadcast your EVA reports back. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to pretend that these are like soil samples or something. You know, stuff that you don't want to transmit. So he's going to collect them from the lab. Now, they're on his person now. So when I go back to the lab, it still has the data there. There's no experiments anymore. Okay, we've taken the experiments, but the data is still there. And we're gaining science, and the two scientists are busy, busy bees working away doing research. So we're going to let go here. He's got the experiments. I'm going to go the long way around so I don't hit the solar panels, because I always do that. And I don't have Kerbal Attachment Systems yet, because it's not updated or whatever they're going to call the new version that they're working on. So I can't fix the solar panels. And F, grab, and the new board button, B. Alright, so now he's in that pod, and he's got the science in there with him. So now he can detach and head back to the planet. No need to take the whole lander back, because we got a fuel tank here. We can refuel it. We have the technology. And before anyone complains, yes, I know this is a crappy little power distribution center, but it's the best solar panels I have right now. So that's why it's just a cheap little stick there to charge the batteries. Eventually I'll detach that, it'll burn up, and I'll put an actual power plant out the bottom or something. But uh, Anyways, that's how the labs work. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, leave the message messages below. I will be posting this on YouTube for further reviews. 
just look for 1.0 Mobile Lab. That's it. Have a nice day.